After days of being accused of giving mixed messages, the Prime Minister now says that face coverings should be worn in shops in England to help prevent the spread of coronavirus. And the government is expected to decide within hours uh, that the policy should in fact be mandatory. Only yesterday, the Cabinet Office Minister Michael Gove was saying that it was best to rely on people's common sense. Labour has accused ministers of contradicting themselves and of confusing the public. Face coverings are already compulsory in shops in Scotland, but so far Wales and Northern Ireland have not adopted the same policy. Our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, has the latest. Joe, how are you? I'm Boris. Off. On. Is that what you're on? <laughs> Off. Put that on. And definitely on. We always have to this morning, very much on face coverings and elbow bumps to boot. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. But does the Prime Minister want you to wear a mask or not? Basically, it's a mobile hospital, isn't it? When in enclosed spaces, should we all get used to this? Yes, face coverings uh, I think people should be wearing in shops. And in terms of uh, how we do that, how, whether we make it mandatory or not, we'll, we'll be looking at the, at the guidance. We'll be saying a little bit more. In the, in the next few days. Only yesterday, senior minister said wearing masks in shops should not be compulsory. And at the start of the crisis, government scientists suggested they could do more harm than good. But that thinking's shifted. Face coverings are already compulsory here on public transport. And as early as tomorrow, ministers are likely to confirm you will have to cover your face in shops in England. And that's already routine elsewhere. It's a real contrast to the advice across the UK at the start. As evidence is built of the virus spreading through the air, covering up in shops became compulsory in Scotland seven days ago. I think we've gone in Scotland from it being pretty patchy um, up until now to, as of Friday, compliance probably being quite close to 100%. But no photo opportunities for politicians covering their faces in Wales just yet. They'll only be compulsory on public transport in a fortnight. For the sake of simplicity and consistency, as well as being part of our plan to help reduce the risk of transmission while on public transport, where it is not possible to maintain a two-metre physical distance, it will become mandatory in Wales. In other countries, covering up has become part of common culture as the virus has made its way across the world. But after early doubts, progress has been more halting here. Labour says the government should catch up. I think the issue here has been the lack of clarity. It's so critical with these issues. We've learned that from everything to do with this virus, that we need clarity of message, that people understand what's expected of them and, and when that's going to happen. Again, rules are emerging in what feels like fits and starts, what ministers would call evolution of the guidance. Others might call confusion. But coronavirus is still changing our world. In so many ways, it looks different now. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. Well, our nightly update on the official data released by the Department of Health and Social Care. The number of people reported to have died in the last 24-hour period after testing positive for coronavirus is 11. Figures just after the weekend are usually much lower. The latest seven-day rolling average figure is 85. And the total number of deaths of those confirmed to have died with COVID-19 is now 44,830 for the UK. With me is our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh. Fergus, let's talk about face coverings. And if this policy, as we expect, is about to be changed by Boris Johnson, it's quite a big change, given what they were saying a few months ago. Uh, indeed, what some were saying in the last few days. Has the science changed? You know, what are the factors behind it? Well, we know, Hugh, that tightly fitted medical masks definitely offer protection. But the science on face coverings, which may be homemade, is far less clear-cut. But evidence is emerging that they can help reduce the risk of spread, especially of so-called asymptomatic transmission, where people go out not realising they're infected. Now, this is mostly about altruism. You wear a face covering in a supermarket to protect me, and I wear one to protect you by reducing the chance of contaminated droplets from spreading. Now, the hope had been that this would become the norm, socially acceptable in the UK, but the UK has been less keen on wearing them, people here, than in many other European countries. Now, 
in Scotland and in England, any type of face covering is fine. The Welsh Government said today that they should be made of three layers based on World Health Organisation advice. What is absolutely clear is that face coverings are only part of the solution. We mustn't forget hand hygiene and social distancing. Fergus, again, many thanks. Fergus Walsh there, our medical correspondent.